This is a practice exercise from page 124 of the textbook looking at how to write net ionic equations for precipitation reactions. So in order to write a net ionic equation, I think it's easier to first write the full molecular equation, then do a complete ionic, and then move to the net ionic. So you're actually going to have to do some steps between starting and getting to the net ionic. You usually can't write it just from looking at it. In addition, they're asking us to predict the products because they're telling us the reactants, silver nitrate, potassium phosphate, but they're not telling us what the products are. The easiest way to figure out what the products are is to figure out which ions are in the reactants. So if I look at silver nitrate, I know that silver is Ag with a positive one charge. Nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. Potassium is K with a positive one charge, and phosphate is PO4 with a three negative charge. So now I know what reactants I have, and I can start to think about what my products are going to be. Remembering that my cation needs to combine with a new anion, like so. So that tells me what my reactants are and what my products are. I'm going to start by writing out my molecular equation. So I know that my first reactant was silver nitrate. I know that the formula is AgNO3 because of the charges. I know that it was an aqueous solution. I know that it reacted with potassium phosphate, which is going to have the formula K3PO4, again based on the charges. Again, I know this is aqueous. I know that one of my products is going to be silver phosphate. Ag3PO4 because of the charges. Now I don't yet know if this is aqueous or if it's solid. I don't know if it's a precipitate. I will check my solubility rules in a minute to determine that. I'm going to write in my last product which is the potassium nitrate formula KNO3. And again I don't know if that is going to be the solid precipitate or aqueous solution so I can check my solubility rules. So looking down at the solubility rules, first thing we should remember Anything containing nitrate, that's going to be soluble. So that tells us that our potassium nitrate is going to be aqueous. And then we can go check what's going on with our silver phosphate. So if we find phosphate, we see that it is in the insoluble section, and we don't see anything for silver that would be an exception to that. So going back up here, that means since it's insoluble, it is going to be are solid, but we're not quite done writing the equation yet. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that it's balanced. So I can see that I've got three potassiums here, but only one on this side of the equation, which means I'm going to need a coefficient of three on the potassium nitrate. Similarly, I can see that I've got three silver atoms here, but only one on the reactant side, so I'm going to need a coefficient of 3 here as well. And then if I check the rest of the compounds, everything else looks like it's balanced. So that's my molecular. The next thing I'm going to write is my complete ionic. In order to write my complete ionic, I take anything that is aqueous and I write it as its ions. So next is complete ionic. Since my silver nitrate is aqueous, I'm going to rewrite that as three aqueous silver ions and three aqueous nitrate ions. Since my potassium phosphate is also aqueous, I'm going to write that as three potassium ions, and I know there are three because of the subscript. Again, that's aqueous. There's only one phosphate ion but it's still aqueous. I'm going to keep the silver phosphate together. It is not aqueous, so it is not broken apart into ions. So that stays the same. And then I am going to break apart the potassium nitrate because that is again aqueous. I can see that there are three potassium ions and three nitrate ions. It'd be best to keep this all in one line, but since I'm running out of space, that's why we're on two lines. Next thing I'm going to write is my net ionic equation. 
In order to write my net ionic equation, I need to cancel out my spectator ions. Spectator ions are any ions that don't participate in the reaction. And I can tell that they don't participate in the reaction because they stay exactly the same from the reactant side to the product side. They don't do anything, they just watch, which is why they're called spectator ions. So trying to identify our spectator ions, we want to look for things that appear on both sides of the equation. So I can see the three nitrate groups here, and I still have the same three nitrate groups here. I should have written in the charge on that one. But since I still have the same groups on both sides, they are spectators, and I don't need them in my net ionic. If I keep looking, I should see that the same thing is true for the potassium. There are three potassium ions here, three potassium ions here. They have not changed, so they are just spectator ions. The silver ions and the phosphate ions have changed because they formed a new product. So when I write my net ionic equation, all I'm going to write is the three aqueous silver ions combining with the one aqueous phosphate ion forming that silver phosphate precipitate. So again, in order to write your net ionic, I think it's easiest to write your full molecular equation then write your complete ionic, then cancel out your spectator ions in order to write your net ionic equation.